Hey everybody, welcome back to Fix the Rust Bucket. Well, the search for the door and fender is over finally. I didn't want to spend around, it's like $300 for a door, repop door, and it was around $200 for a repopped fender. Um, also the bumper, a bumper kit was over 300. It was almost $400 for a bumper kit. I'm not paying that much money for a old truck and it's already beat up a little bit. I don't need anything brand new. As you know, the first door, the original door on the truck took a really hard hit and it's just, it's not repairable. The outside damaged beyond repair and the inside down here is all bent and buckled as well. The internal parts, the window and the trim are good on it, but there's just no repair in this. So we needed a new door shell. As you can see here, the skin separated from the inside shell bottom is buckled in and there's a bunch of damage down underneath here it's separated all right here from the skin now the window the trim and all the internal parts are good so we're going to pull that off and use that on the new door that we get so in the search for doors i'm not going to turn down a free deal this door and this fender were free had a little bit of dent on the door. Was thinking about maybe repairing it. The inside is not damaged. It's actually really clean inside there. Came off of a decent truck. The fender was going to be a little bit harder to repair, but was willing to take it on and see what we could do with it. It's really only this dent in this area here. But came across a great deal. Found a bumper that's in good shape. No dents, $40. Not going to turn that down. Not when I had to spend $300 to get a bumper and a kit. We scavenged off this part here is off the old truck. It's the bottom skirt with the fog lights already set up. We're going to reattach it to that truck that the bumper came off of. We also picked up the right front fender and the right front door and bonus for me, it's red, no painting necessary. There's no dents, it's dirty, but there's no dents in the fender and there's no dents in the door. It even still has the trim that matches the truck we're fixing and the 1500 with the Chevy emblem on it. Door handle's good on this one. The other one from the old door is scratched up from the accident, but we are gonna get rid of all the internal parts on this and the uh, rubber seal for the glass. And I'll show you why. So this is why I'm not going to keep anything from this door on the inside and just the shell itself. It's filthy dirty. It, this truck's been down some dirt roads that gets down inside there. And eventually with the motors, the gears and all the tracks for the motors, it's going to bind them up. It's going to cause problems. And I don't need this because the old door on the truck, everything is spotless and clean. Okay, it's the next day. I have all the parts from all three doors laid out across this table. Our door locks, our handles, our window tracks, and our door seals and window seals over here. Our door is going back on the truck. I got it all power washed and cleaned up yesterday. It's dried out, so now we're ready to reassemble all the parts. But first, we're gonna pick through the best of what we have here to put back on the door. We're gonna start off just eliminating the parts that we don't want or the junk parts so for instance this seal here this came off the door that we're going to be putting back on the truck it's filthy dirty there's no parts that we can take or use off of it we're going to get rid of that one the other two looking at them i know this one is the, it's the cleanest one and 
The seals are good. There's no damage or tears in it. This one is the same. There's no damage or tears, but it's a little bit dirtier. I'm not going to clean it. I'm just going to get rid of it. So this is the one we're going to use to put back on. So moving on to the actual door seal and the window seal that sits inside the door. This one here is the one that came off of the new, well, the used door that we got, the dirty truck. And we're just going to get rid of that one. I'm not going to spend my time cleaning it. This one here was off of the silver door that we got. The door for free. So looking at it, the felt where the window rides inside and between the seals, the felt and the rubber seal is in good shape. The rubber seals around where the window goes in and also where it mounts and seals on the door or seals up the door. That looks good. Same thing with this one here. The seal around where the window goes. The felt on the inside here was good. They both were actually in fairly, they're in the same, these two are in the same condition. So it really doesn't matter. I did look, make sure there's no tears or any rips in the rubber. There wasn't. We're just gonna go ahead and, they're both in the same condition. So we're just gonna go ahead and select one. We'll pick that one. Keep this one on the side just in case we need it later on. Hopefully we don't. So those two are selected now. Moving on to the window tracks and figuring out which one we're gonna use. This track right here is the one that came out of the silver door. That one's already, I'm gonna eliminate that. There is a lot of rust around the motor. Also, this right here is the bracket that attaches to the track where your window clamps, your door window clamps in and it slides up and down. It's broken from the track, so that one automatically is out. This track here is off of the door that we're gonna be putting onto the truck, the red, the red door that we got. I'm not gonna use this one either because remember that truck door was filthy dirty and covered in a lot of dust. The motor doesn't look too bad, but I'm not gonna chance it. I don't wanna to have to tear the door apart because all of a sudden the motor fails out. Again, we'll put it to the side. We'll take apart some pieces and save probably some pieces onto the side. With that, that only leaves us the track that came out of the truck that we're fixing, the original door. The motor is clean. Not as much rust or corrosion shown around the motor mount area. Also the track and all the cables are still in good shape. And right here, your window clamps on both sides are still secure around the plastic brackets. So that's our window track. We're gonna keep that one. So moving on from the window track, we're gonna go to the door handles. Now this one here, we could probably use some parts. We're gonna hold on to it for now, just in case we need any of these plastic clips that hold on the metal wires for which we're gonna get into in a minute. But we can't use this one because of the chrome. The truck doesn't have any chrome on it. This one here is the one, the door handle again. The inside, this is really the only part I need. We're gonna be replacing the locks. So these two parts here, we'll just hold this on the side, but we're not gonna keep this one either. It's been scratched up and chipped, it's not repairable. The door that we got, the red door, this handle came off of it, it's in good shape, except for that plastic little clip right there. So we're gonna replace that. So that's gonna be our door handle for the truck. Then we get into the door locks. The door locks, I was a little more picky on. I did look them over already once. And we're gonna go over them now and what I noticed and what we're gonna keep. So with all of our other parts selected on the door, now we're down to the door latches. This is the latch that came off the wrecked truck. This is the latch that came off the dirty door, I'm calling it. And this came off the silver door that we scavenged parts off of. This one, right away, I'm not gonna use it. It's filthy dirty. I don't wanna have problems down the road with it being dirty. So we're gonna put it off to the side. So with the dirty one discarded, we have two choices. Looking them over, everything is the same, you know pretty much the same. There's nothing damaged on them. Condition-wise, they look the same. 
filthy wise they look the same they're not in bad shape so we're just going to stick with the one that we already know is working i don't know about this one because it came off of a truck that i don't know about i know this one was working so again i'm going to take this one put it off to the side so with the final part that we needed to reassemble the door which is the door latch picked we have all of our parts so we have our door latch our outside and inside handle our seals other seal for the window and the door seal and our window track and the motor so with everything removed except for our door latch assembly and our window track assembly it's already out of the truck it's out of the door perfect opportunity to re-lube both of them we're going to use just a white silicone spray on the latch itself i blew it out with an air gun got the dust that i could out of there and we're just going to go ahead and hit the parts that move and spray that down for the window track the spray would work but i went out and picked up the white lithium grease paste from lucas oil i'll uh, post a link down in the description from the manufacturer they do come with the white lithium grease paste put on them it's worn out okay, you can see it but it's it's not there we're going to put it on the inside of the track and also where where the window clamps run along the outside of this track we're going to also put the white lithium paste on the outside there best time to do it and then Shouldn't have to do this for a long time, if ever again. So, just gonna take and smear it into the track. There's nothing, nothing special about it. Put it on both sides. We'll do the one side first, and then we'll hit the other side. Now, get a little paintbrush to smear it around. I'm gonna smear it on the track where, like I said, these clamps glide both front and back sides and down along the bottom of the track where this plastic piece and these cables ride along there. I do want to get some of it on the cables so when they run through these pulleys or these little wheels here it will also get down on the wheels. So with this side coated now be careful don't get it inside the clamps where your window goes you don't want that in there. I'm going to take and flip over the track. And we're just going to, on this part here, you don't need to do the top part of the track here. Nothing rides on there. Just this plastic piece. You could probably see a little bit better over here. Just the plastic part of the clamp rides on this just the very outside of that rail. Squeeze a little bit more out in between right here and to the bottom. I'm gonna save the brush for now because there's actually some spots where these door latch, these bars, these little metal bars slide through some stuff. So, I'm not going to discard that just yet. Let's just hang on to that. Probably a little overkill, but it's okay. It was dirty. So, like I said, just save some of it on your brush for the door where those, the rods, the metal rods go. It's only going to be these three spots. Right here is where the rod for your handle, the door handle lock, and opening and closing your door rides through here. So we're just gonna go ahead and smear that inside the groove. Especially after we power wash this door, we wanna make sure we get some grease back in here. 
for those to ride on. Doesn't need to be fancy and it doesn't need to be pretty. This is all going to get covered up. I'm going to start off with the window track. Everything on here is either a 10 millimeter or an Allen key, but all the bolts, nuts and bolts for this are 10 millimeter. correctly and then tighten them down. Window track in place, get the door handle, and reinstall the door handle on the outside. This could be a tad bit tricky because you have to get the three studs lined up and then get the nut on them. So just I'm going to start. This is the closest and easiest one to access holding the back or the outside, holding the handle on. Slip that in there and hope we don't drop it in the door. Again, holding the handle on the outside. Just loosen up that bolt down there. Take this one out. This is for the window track. Let the track drop out of the way. Just gonna grab the cable and pull it to the side. And I can just straight shot back to that. The track tack, uh, back on tight, that bolt's on tight. Back through here. Snug up the second. Nut for the handle. Last one. Snug that one up. This little rubber plug just covers up this hole here for access to the nut and bolt for your handle. And just pop that back in place. 
Now move on to the locking mechanism and latches. Okay, so now we have the outside door handle installed and the window track and power, you know, power window motor on. Now we're going to install back your latching system and your locking system. A little thread lock on the three bolts that will go on the outside here. First, you got to get all these bars. So you have these two. Let me get just by here. So one goes to the door handle to release pulling on the door. The other one goes to your lock on the inside of the door. The outside too. One goes to your lock to unlock it and the other one goes to the handle on the outside. You have to get them kind of back in the right position. And since I have extra parts, I can show you what I'm talking about here. So for the inside door handle, those little metal bars I was just showing you clip on to these. So when you pull on your door handle on the inside, it pulls on that bar. This is the chrome one that we're not using, the outside one. You have the two spots for the metal bars to go to. This green one right here is your lock cylinder for your key to unlock the door. And that correct bar has to go in there. And then this white one here is actually when you go and pull open your door handle, you'll see it. It unlocks and pulls the latch. They're kind of, they're different lengths. So the line, once you get this back in place, they'll line right up to where they need to go. You just have to have them so they're not tangled all up together when you get them in there. So with that, we're going to go ahead and try and get this pushed back in the door. Yeah. Getting too much grease all over ourselves. grab and leave these bars loose for now and get this whole assembly lined up and the screws in there loose we'll go back and tighten them down afterwards but it'll give us a little bit of wiggle room and hold this in place to get our bars back on with that one tightened down it's going to hold that lock mechanism everything in its place now it's just a matter of looking in here reaching in here and getting the metal bars back where they go and take those plastic tabs and fold them over, locking them in place. Leave these two for the outside. Lean down out of your way. This first one snapped in. The second one. the second one so now our outside door handle and lock are assembled I'll take a minute here and I'm going to show you what's going on inside the door so you can understand it better let me try and explain it to you this way okay so now I have one of the old ones we're not using and this handle and I can show you what was going on inside the door for the outside door handle Again, we put the latch part right here, screwed it down with one screw. The two here are, like I said, are for the inside handle and lock. These two over here, which sit up against the outside skin area of your door, actually have to sit up in the upright position like this. Now with them sitting up in the upright position like that, this is your outside door handle. It's sitting in the door as well like this. These, I guess you would call them retaining clips that hold on, hold on to the metal wires. Not only do they snap, you see the little loop right there? Not only do they snap onto the metal bar, but the metal bar also has to go inside that hole. So for the bottom one, which actually did the top one first. Lifted that white tab up as high as I could. 
And then here, you take and insert that metal rod through the hole, take the, the plastic clip, push down until it snaps into place, locking that bar and the handle together. Same thing here on the green one. So you have the little 90 degree bend. The 90 degree bend goes inside that hole right there. You have to keep that up out of the way. Slips inside the hole. This is the back side of the lock cylinder. And then you take that tab again, where that little clamp is, and push it down till it locks in place on there. And that secures those two bars to your handle so you can open the door and unlock it and all that. Now these two long ones here that are on the inside, they're the same thing, just on the inside door handle and the lock slide lock on there. This little one, short one, is your lock, or excuse me, your handle and lock. This one here, again, you can't have them twisted up with each other. That's, this is where I grease these so this bar can slide in and out up here with no issue. So that's just snap them back in place. They're snapped in there. Before I go any farther with the handle or anything, I'm gonna get back to these three bolts, put a little bit of thread lock on them, set them in there, and then that's in place as well. Okay, so with the window glass, let me get you a shot of this. Put my hand in there. If you can see kind of right here, you can see where the track, or excuse me, the clamp on the track holds the window. If it's a brand new window, you're gonna have to line it up. There you go, you can see that one a lot better. You can see the square where the clamp holds on, goes all the way up to the top. The window's dirty, obviously. If it's a brand new window, you're gonna have to do, do a little bit of alignment putting it in there. But since we're not using a new window, there's nothing wrong with this one gonna make it easy for us so we're gonna go to the outside of the door so lean the door in on you go outside of the door and send the front of the glass down first in, into the door cavity carefully so you don't chip your glass and then the back as you can see will fall into place Bring it down slowly and just rest it on the clamps. Before you go and tighten down the clamps on your window, and you just have them set in place, we're going to take the window and move it just a little bit forwards because we have to still install our seals. So we have our door and window seal. And then on the outside, our cosmetic seal and, well, it's cosmetic piece with the seal and guide for the window. That will come last. But in order to install this one, these end pieces, they're not made out of soft rubber. They're hard plastic. And they have to get twisted and drop down into the door here to bolt into here. And then the one up front over here. Yeah, up here. So before you go and put your window down in the clamps and completely tight just take your window slide it forward if you can oh, so there you go it's out of the way i can get the back rubber seal inside and the front seal in there so on the front it's going to be easier to see but just take it twist slide it down in there same thing on the back side it sits like this in the door, twist it, slip it down through there, around your window. The front is lined up. There's a little dimple that sticks out, slips in that hole, and then the screw goes in there. And we're still working on the back. We have it almost there. Just gotta get it to turn and the same thing a little plastic dimple sticks out and then the screw goes in there. Okay. 
there's no room in here for your hands at all. Once you get all this stuff back in there, it just gets super tight. Just move everything around until you get lined back up. So that's facing the right direction, but up here the seal is inside where we want it to be. We want it to be on the outside. So I'm just gonna lift back up a little bit, get the seal over this metal groove, and then twist that back in, which is where it needs to be. And this one needs is where it needs to be. Not on tight, but not on super loose. Same thing with the back one here, because that, that track that we put in there, the window actually sits down in that groove of that rubber seal as well down there. So I want to move the window back down and seal it, and then we can finally tighten that window back down on the tracks. So again, I'll reach up in here, make sure this is lined up correctly. Get the screw in. loose and now might as well we're going to go ahead and set the seal around the door that's just going to get it out of our way same thing across the bottom set that in place that should help with lining up the window. So I'm gonna take this back, this is the back side of the window, I'm gonna take and stick it inside the seal and slide it back down in, back down to the clamps. So turn it, get it to come back up. Pushing, I'm pushing the window against the back side of the seal, which, and then lower it down in those clamps I showed you a minute ago. They're lined up where they need to be. Get that out of my way. All right, so the window's in its clamps in the right position. The seal is back in, snug all the way around the wind or around the opening. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down the seal first. With that tight and our window in the correct area, down here we're going to go ahead and tighten up the clamps on the window now. Now the back one here, it's too hard to get to with a socket, so I'm just going to use a wrench to reach down in there and tighten it up. All right. These two latches are actually going to, we're gonna, I still gotta put the rest of the door, you know, the inside of the door on there. But before we get to that, I gotta hang the door in the truck and get all the wiring back through here and all the plugs back on. That was in an earlier video where we, a little while back, where we took it all apart. So we're not gonna do any more to putting this together here, except for this seal on the outside. And then this door is done to hang on to back onto the truck. So let me get this outside seal back in place. This seal on the outside here, which, oh, you couldn't see it. The seal on the outside here also just pushes down there's no screws or anything that holds it in place. All 
the window is now in between the outside seal and the inside seal I just we just installed. We will eventually this is going to go back on. I guess I could show you, I might as well show you right now. Slide that on here. This is in place for your slide lat your slide lock inside the car. Just take these three tabs, these three holes. Slide it on. There's a bolt hole right there, which just put it on. That's back on. So the last bar to put on here, again, push that out of your way. It's your 90 degree angle. Slip it in the back, drop that down in its hole, take the blue clamp, snap it on place. All right, so I forgot one last little part. It's just a cover, forgot to put it back on there. It's just a cover over top of your latch. It's just a little pressed in clamp. So just take, line up the holes, snaps back into place, and it's done. All right, so that wraps it up with getting the door ready to go back on the truck, getting all the old the stuff out of the old rack door, getting it onto the new door, well, the used new door that's going to be going on the truck. I hope that helps somebody out. If you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you subscribe to the channel, it will get you a chance to win a Fix the Rust Bucket mug. And in this giveaway, we're giving away a small little wristband, magnetic wristband. It's like a third hand, I guess, if you're holding screws and stuff, as well as a Fix the Rust Bucket sticker. The giveaway will be at 250 subscribers. We're almost there. We're somewhere around 228, 230, I just checked. Next video, we're gonna be getting ready to install the door and fender. But before we get to the fender, we're gonna be reinstalling the doors. We have new door hinge pins for both sides. The driver's side door is uh, just slightly off the hinge. You know, the hinges are worn out. So we're gonna do both sides at one time. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. And if you like this kind of content, give me a thumbs up.